this exercise, I'm going to deal with the ear. And the ear, you have to keep that in mind, is not only this part which we see on the surface of the body. This is called the auricle of the ear or the pinna of the ear. And it is only part of what we call the external ear. But the ear, most of the ear, part of the external ear, all the middle ear and the inner ear, they are hidden inside the bones of the skull, especially the, they are present in the tetras part of the temporal bone. Remember that there is the external acoustic meatus here. So the auricle, which collects the sound waves, will lead to the external acoustic meatus. This is the external acoustic meatus together with the auricle. They form the external ear. You can see that part of the external acoustic meatus is bony, the part that you can see on the skull, and the other part is cartilaginous of the external acoustic meatus. Also, please note that the external acoustic meatus, in fact, is not horizontal. See, the look at the alignment of the petrous temporal bone and compare this to the alignment of the petrous temporal bone in the skull, you will find that the external acoustic meatus, in fact, not only passes medially, but medially and forwards. And this is the reason that the stethoscope tips are angulated to conform to this shape. You see, the, the stethoscope tips must be put with the tips pointing anteriorly because the external acoustic meatus goes medially and forwards it's about 2.5 centimeter in length and you can see that the border between the external ear and the middle ear which is completely present within the petrous part of the temporal bone there is the tympanic membrane this is the tympanic membrane and the cavity of the middle ear is called the tympanic cavity so this is the middle ear and then we have the third part of the ear which is called the inner ear let's deal with the middle ear it is located in the petrous temporal bone as you can see in this plastic model and the cavity of the middle ear which is called the tympanic cavity is filled with air and it also communicates as you can see here through a canal called the Eustachian Canal with the pharynx, with the nasopharynx. That's why the canal is also called the pharyngotympanic tube. And there are muscles here. Some of these muscles, they work on the tube and they open the tube because the tube is normally closed, but it can open to equalize pressure, air pressure between the middle ear cavity and the exterior also it communicates posteriorly with a tympanic antrum a big space within the petrous temporal bone inside it you can see three bones called ossicles these are the malleus incus and stapes the malleus looks like a hammer and it's attached to the surface of the tympanic membrane then we have the incus like the anvil and then the stapes, which is like a stirrup. The stapes, you can see the foot of the stapes is oval in shape and it closes a window here in the inner ear called the oval window. Also, there are muscles on the middle ear. One of them is located here, is represented by this wire, and this is called the tensor tympani muscle. As the name indicates, it tenses the malleus and or it's attached to the malleus and it tenses the tympanic membrane and is used to um, dampen the sounds there's another muscle which is called the stapedius muscle and this muscle is attached to the stapes and also it holds the stapes when there is high sound so it dampens the sounds that's why when this muscle the stapedius and even when the tensor tympani are paralyzed then the patient will have hypersensitivity to loud sounds, what we call hyperacusis. The tensor tympani is supplied by a branch of the trigeminal nerve from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, while the stapedius muscle is supplied by a branch of the facial nerve. Remember that the facial nerve has a course within the inner ear and the middle ear. 
just to mention also that this pharyngotympanic tube or the eustachian tube is also called the auditory tube. As I said, it equalizes the pressure between the middle ear cavity and the exterior, but at the same time, it is also a route of connection between the pharynx, upper part of the pharynx, and the middle ear. So that is a route where the upper respiratory tract infection can spread to the middle ear and cause inflammation of the middle ear, especially in children. Now in the inner ear, which is excavated inside the petrous part of the temporal bone, there is what we call a bony labyrinth. So this is the region of the bony labyrinth. It is, it is the spaces within the bone. It is not a bone by itself, but it is the spaces within the bone, and the, the mold or the template of these spaces is what we call the bony labyrinth. It is formed of a region which is called the um, vestibule, and the other region which is um, for the semicircular canals, and the other region is for the cochlea. And then within the bony labyrinth, we have a membranous labyrinth, which is formed by membranes. Inside these membranes, there is fluid, which is called endolymph. Between these membranes and the bone, there is another fluid, which is called the perilymph. And it is this fluid that is located inside the vibrations of these fluids, which are produced by the vibrations of the ossicles, that will be converted inside the ear, inside the cochlea of the ear, into nerve impulses for hearing. So if we look here at the membranous labyrinth, we will find the region of the vestibule, which is not very clearly shown here. It is divided into, this vestibule is divided into utricle and saccule, but it is not shown, very clearly shown. But I can show you clearly the semicircular ducts and where they are distended by an ampulla here. And also, you can see the cochlear duct, which has two and a half turns around itself. And these are the nerves, the vestibulocochlear nerves. So this is the cochlear part of the vestibulocochlear that goes to the cochlea. And this is the vestibular part that receives sensations of equilibrium from the vestibule and the semicircular canal. The, the vestibule provides uh, sensations that are related to static position, uh, while the semicircular canal for the rotary position. I will open the cochlea here, and you can see the cochlear duct and the turns of the cochlea, and in the middle is the cochlear nerve. looks like a snail shell. That's why it's called the cochlea. Finally, let me show you the ossicles here. They're very small bones. They articulate with each other by synovial joints. This means that there is a lot of movement taking place in between them because they vibrate when the tympanic membrane vibrates. Look at them here. So we have three, we have a duplicate here. This is the this is the malleus and this is the incus and this is the stapes. Look at the size. And as I said, the joints are synovial joints. So in the skull, it's not only the temporomandibular joint that is a synovial joint. There are synovial joints between these bones of the ossicles. And um, if you are worried about classification of bone, then these ossicles are considered as part of the axial skeleton, not the appendicular skeleton. Just to remind you that all these semicircular canals and the cochlea, uh, these are spaces within the bone. So what you can see here, this is a cast of these spaces. So there is a bony labyrinth and inside it, there is a membranous labyrinth. Also, you can see the three ossicles I just want to attract your attention that these ossicles, they articulate with each other by synovial joints. So if you are asked 
uh, how many synovial joints are present in the head, then your first impression will be like it's only the uh, temporomandibular joint because all the other joints, like uh, the joints between the bones of the calvaria, they are fibrous joints. There is no movement taking place. But except these joints between the uh, three ossicles, they are synovial joints, which indicate, as uh, usual, that there is a great mobility taking place because they amplify the sound waves and transmit them to the inner ear. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Two. So three bones, two joints, because on this side, the bone is fused to the tympanic membrane. And on the other side, you have the uh, stapes, uh, which the foot piece of the stapes is attached to the oval window. It's fused to it. So when it vibrates, this will cause ripples in the water that is present in the inner ear. So there is no joint, in other words, here. You have one bone here and then connected to the middle bone, the incus, and then you have the malleus. And so you have one joint here and the other joint is here. Malleus, incus, and stapes, miss, from lateral to medial. Does this answer your question? I would say three pairs of synovial joints to be specific and also i would like to remind you that the cartilage that is present here in the auricle or the external ear is not a hyaline cartilage it's not like the cartilage that is present in the nose this is an elastic cartilage that's one example of elastic cartilages in the body the other one is in the epiglottis that's why uh, when you deform your auricle when you just fold your auricle, it just springs back immediately to its uh, normal shape because it is elastic cartilage. So last, maybe last question. I just want you to identify the structure at the tip of the pointer. Pharyngotympanic tube or eustachian tube. And as its name indicates, it communicates between the tympanum or the middle ear cavity and the pharynx, the nasopharynx. Uh, what, what, why do we need this communication? Yes, so it equalizes the pressure between the atmospheric pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane. So here is the atmospheric pressure and there is atmospheric pressure on the side of the nose and the nasopharynx as well. And when there is rapid change in pressure, then this uh, will cause tension on the tympanic membrane. This is what happens in the airplane. And that's why you are encouraged to swallow in order to equalize the pressure. So you either have a, like a candy or a chewing gum in order to encourage you to swallow. And as you are swallowing, the auditory tube opens because you are moving the muscles that are connected between the auditory tube and the palate, and so this will cause more of the air to pass from the nose or nasopharynx into the middle ear and equalize the pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane, okay? As a dentist, why should you care that much about the ear? Yes, the corda tympani. Uh, participate in the innervation of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and also the nerves that supply the middle ear and the external ear. Many of these nerves, like the auriculotemporal nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, they also supply the ear. Like the auriculotemporal nerve is branch of the mandibular nerve and this mandibular nerve, it supplies the teeth, it supplies the gum and that's why sometimes a, a toothache might present as an earache. Uh, this is what we call referred pain, as if the pain is uh, arising from the ear, but the problem is in the tooth, because it's almost the same nerves that supply the ear, also supply the teeth and mouth.